Good morning. Today we're going to be jamming into distributed ledgers. So we've already learned that you start with basically a private key, right? A key pair kind of starts all of this and that private key uh, can be generated and it's like a 64 character hex string and we could, you know, hash something to get something very similar. Like if we were to hash Alice, we get something that looks just like a private key. So what we could do is kind of like plug that in as a very insecure private key, but something to use for testing and we will create an address and a signing key with that. And then what Alice can do is she can come along and she can sign some data uh, with her private key, uh, any message, right? And that's going to create a signature that can go across the network and other people can basically take her message and uh, reverse the, uh, the signing so they can recover it. So if we go to this recover here, then they can take in the message and the signature and get back out, uh, hopefully, the same address as we have up there. Exactly, there we go. So so this, this signature and this message can go out on the network and anyone on the network can prove that it was Alice that indeed did sign that. So what we're gonna do is just kind of assume that we have these identities here so we'll just say this is Alice and we'll say when she signs things that uh, people across the network know <laughs> that it was her that signed it we're gonna kind of hide that stuff away for a little bit and kind of take take a, a wider view and we're gonna look at uh, the distributed ledger and how how a ledger works so uh, on our quest to get through or to learn more about what decentralized programmable money is, I think we need to kind of focus on the money part, right? What What is, and, and you know, with, within Ethereum, you do a lot of state changes and a lot of things that aren't moving around money, but this kind of started with, with programmable money, and so let's really dig into that. So money is basically moved like on a ledger, right? If, we, if, if Alice and Bob wanted to keep track of their debts to each other or something of that nature, they would basically create a ledger with... Um, transactions that go on it right and those transactions would probably have like a to address and a from address and some kind of value attached to them and if we kind of then say it's gonna go to Bob from Alice right and we wire up that button and we hit go there we go we can we can see that that transaction goes on alice sends bob another three then what we can do is we can look at that balance for bob so if we plug bob into this address and then we have this value over here and we hit click we we query the the ledger for the balance of bob and bob is at four Okay, so that's that's basically the start of a ledger. But what we want to do here is be able to kind of have Alice in one place and Bob in another place and be able to have this ledger distributed, right? So instead of Alice and Bob being on the same page working on it, what, would, what we want to do is basically set up kind of single player here, right? So we want Alice to be able to know her balance and we'll plug that in here and what we're going to do is not just send stuff directly to the ledger, but we're going to want to send it across a network. So what we'll do is we'll plug in a publish layer over here. So we'll turn our uh, we'll turn our transaction into JSON and we'll send it across the network. Okay. Boop. And Alice is going to be the from address always. And normally, if we were using cryptography, there wouldn't even be a from. You would use a recover, and the recovered address would be the from. But we're kind of we're, we're glossing over the cryptography here to focus on the dynamics of a ledger and how sending money around might look uh, once we have this nice networking layer. Or and by nice, I mean basically, messages will travel across the network and they can't be tampered with because we've used crypto to sign them, but they may not reach their destination. In terms of a distributed network, you don't know if guy over here can talk to guy over here, and you never know if that guy receives it until he sends you something back with his signed keys, and it, it, it's messy, right? Basically, uh, uh, 
a traditional centralized network is much cleaner than this distributed network where all these different nodes are talking peer to peer. And so we're going to kind of play around with some of those mechanics here once I get the network wired up. But what we have here is, uh, oh, I'm doing it wrong. We have a button that allows us to publish this transaction to a network layer, okay? And so then on the other side of the network, we're going to subscribe to that same channel. And then when messages come in, let's see, how do I want this? I'll just put it right here. We're gonna subscribe. When messages come in, we're going to need to, uh, oh, yep, we're gonna have to parse them, right? Because we did a JSON, because it needs to be an object. So just a little, little house cleaning here. And then I know from experience that I need to put in a quick delay here on this activity. The, these are just kind of details getting this to work, but there we go. Now, if I hit send, it goes across the network and lands in the ledger. So what we can do is now, let's bring this guy maybe down here. Okay, what we could do is kind of put all this stuff into, let's kind of cram it into the top left so it makes sense. Copy that and let's get two of them going, right? So what we'll do is I'll reload this one and then get another one in there. And so now we can have Alice and Bob sort of side by side. So Bob is in a different place and Alice is over here, okay? And so now when Alice sends three to Bob, hopefully they both receive it on the network, right? Now, uh, let's say Bob sends a couple back to Alice. Uh, boop, two, go okay so now they're sending value back and forth we can see oh we're not doing this part uh let's uh, let's put a let's put a timer on this balance check so we can see that everybody's balance is uh changing instead of just using like an event we'll just use a timer uh oh can i copy and paste across here oh i thought i could that'd be so cool Copy that dude, click over here, paste that dude. Oh yeah, neat. Oh look, I did it twice. Okay, so then let's hook that timer up over here. Really, we should have just duplicated it across. Okay, now we are at least checking balances. Okay, so now we've got this nice little ledger system going on here where Alice and Bob are moving value between themselves with signed messages. That, that's not really happening right now, but we're pretending. Signed messages and recovering them and proving that each one, and they, they're they keeping a ledger and they're saying, okay, like Alice and Bob are moving funds, and, and this works pretty well. So the first uh, kind of, it, it's I wouldn't even call it a, an attack, it's called a replay attack, but it's more just like, uh, it, it's something obvious that we'll, we'll, we'll see here. Uh, so what happens if Bob is like, well, okay, so Alice is sending me value, but there's no uh, there's no way to tell the difference. So what I'm gonna do is replay the stuff that she's sending me. So Bob sets up a delay, okay? And when content comes in, it's going to delay for a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and speed this delay up too, because this one can be faster. A lot of little tweaks I'm making here, but stay with me. Okay, so Do Bob is going to delay, and then he what he's going to do is he's going to publish that message back to the network. So when Alice says send, send you know one dollar to Bob, Bob's going to say okay, she sent me that one dollar, but then I'm going to replay it on the network that she sent me that dollar again. Okay and it's probably gonna keep looping. So, okay, that dollar comes out from Alice. Oh no, look at that. Replay attack. <laughs> so basically we can see their balances uh, incrementing and there's nothing Alice can do here because even though she, so she signed a transaction that says I send one to Bob and the network basically is set up so when it receives this, it's like, okay, she sent one, one to Bob. And Bob's just replaying that message over and over again, and we see that uh, it's just utter chaos over here. Okay, so how do we fix this? How do we set it up so Alice can only send that message once? Well, what you do is you use something called a nonce. And it's a one-time integer 
that tracks your transactions. And so your ledger has to be set up to do that too. But what we'll do is we'll say require nonce is true. Oh, did I do it? I feel like I missed it. Let's double check that. Yep. Okay. So now the ledger is re requiring a nonce. I'm going to reload that so we get a fresh, a fresh angle on it. Now, if Alice sends a dollar to Bob with a nonce zero, okay, it goes through. But if she sends it again, it's not going to go through on her ledger. That ledger can see that same transaction over and over again, and it's not going to register. While if we watch Bob's le register or ledger that's not set up to respect nonces, well, he's seeing that message replay over and over again. Okay, so Bob's out of here. We've got we've got nonces working. Uh, what we want to do though is be able to send messages a bunch in a row. So we're going to need to pull this nonce function off of here and bring it up here and we'll do the same thing. We'll hook up a timer to it. So it's just sort of constantly checking what uh, Alice's nonce is and giving us some value. And what we'll do is just plug that value right into our transaction so it's always set. So the from is hard coded to Alice and the nonce will be uh, grabbed from the network itself. So then if I say go, we should see Alice sending these indexed transactions that can't be replay replayed. All right, cool. So replay attacks are fixed. Okay, so now uh, if we want to dive in more, the, the next the next attack is, is probably a little bit more subtle, a little bit more complex. So I'm going to kind of trash this current uh, build and bring in uh, bring in something a little more sophisticated. So I built a ledger and I've kind of cleaned stuff out to make it look uh, look a little more digestible here, but what we have is so this is this is Alice, right? And she has uh, these four pieces over here, which are just handling the network stuff. And the way it works is we'll have Alice here, and then we'll have this same thing. So let me just reload so it's saved. Okay, so we'll have Alice, and we'll have Bob. But we're going to bring in a new guy in the middle, always the problem, and that's going to be check. Okay, so we've got Chuck right here, and we've got Bob right here. And again, we're pretending that all of the crypto is here and these are signed messages and they can be recovered. So what ends up on the other end can be proven to be Alice, Chuck, or Bob. The thing that we're playing around with here is what can we do with that signed message crypto, the, the key pair and the signing? What can we do with that given a network with with these assumptions and and the assumptions are basically that we're talking peer to peer things sometimes get there some sometimes don't and uh maybe even could be attacked or at least like censored right so we've got chuck we've got bob we've got alice okay so alice is going to send a hundred bucks to each one of these dudes boop hundred bucks to bob hundred bucks to chuck the nonce is there, it's working, everybody here receives it. Now the, the second piece of the networking that I've added in allows for people to drop off. So if Bob refreshes and Chuck refreshes, their ledger will be cleared. But as long as at least one person is still kicking, they can publish that back to people or they could come query it from that person. So basically at least one node of the network has to be upholding upholding the data and then other people can come get that data from them. Obviously it's not really how it works. You probably have lots of different nodes pinning it, but in our little ledger demo here, these three are able to transact value and it's working over a network that's sort of like this black box magic layer that we're just shipping stuff out to and it's coming back. So what happens though if if for some reason Alice's network is a little shifty? and she all of a sudden loses contact with the main ledger. So now she's kind of off in her own network a little bit. So if I hit reload here and uh, she gets it back, she comes back here 
and then we try to publish to her, she's not going to receive the latest updates, even though these two are receiving the latest updates. So uh, let's say Chuck has the ability to do this, or maybe even Chuck's responsible for this. Chuck. What Chuck can do is basically craft a transaction that goes just to Alice on Alice's network and a transaction that goes just to Bob on Bob's network. But all of them are sort of assuming that they're all on the same network right now moving funds, right? So if if he publishes across the network that he sends $100 to Alice and at the same time publishes across the network where Bob is that he purchased, then Alice gives him the hot dog or whatever he just bought from Alice and uh, Bob gives him the shoes that he just bought from Bob and Chuck's out of there. Basically, like, Chuck just paid for stuff in magic internet money to these two people, and he's he's off to Mexico, right? Then, later on, Alice's network finally starts kicking in, and we've got a big problem, right? Alice and Bob both accepted $100 from Chuck, and he bought some stuff, and now he's gone, and we have no way to rectify, like, whose ledger is correct. And Chuck's like off in Mexico with his new shoes and hot dog, a hundred dollar hot dog, and he's having the time of his life. And Alice and Bob are here trying to figure out how to square their ledgers. So the 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 key takeaway here is that even though we have these signed messages, we have the ability to, with cryptography backed by math, we can prove that this person is this person, and they have signed this message, and this message can't be replayed. We'd never know who's going to get the messages in a distributed network. So in a centralized network, it's really easy to figure out whose ledger is right because some person just says, I am the authority and this transaction is right and this transaction is wrong and you should have checked in with me before you gave Chuck those shoes, right? But in a decentralized network, in a distributed network, it's different because there is no authority and figuring out that authority is is the problem here. And so actually, there it's like this was an unknown question for like decades, right? I mean, it's probably less than decades and there's probably a lot of decent examples of solutions to this problem. And I'll do a side quest on the Byzantine generals problem, which kind of uh, illustrates this also. But this was an unknown question for a long time until... Uh, like proof of work came along until like the Bitcoin white paper came along and proof of work. And I, I don't know if those two are, it probably is proof of work came from the Bitcoin white paper, I'm assuming, but it helped us coordinate. And we'll talk about that next week. And I'm really excited about talk about proof of work because it really like kind of gets everything moving uh, in the direction again. There's sort of like this crypto winter for a while where, uh, you know, the cypherpunks are, are, you know, in these forums doing this awesome stuff, but we still can't move billions of dollars around yet until we have proof of work. And that's what we'll hit uh, next week. So yeah, side quests, WTF is money, right? What what the fart is money? Is it a store of value? Is it a medium exchange? Is it, is it a unit of account? Is ETH money? Up to you, you figure out. It depends on what your definition of is is. But a uh, side quest would be just like, what is money? Like, learn more about what is money. What is it debt? What is money? And then the second is just like, learn more about the 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 cypherpunks of the of the '90s, uh, leading up to uh, you know Satoshi's white paper and proof of work. And next week we will uh, do proof of work. Happy Bowtie Friday! Jump on ETH build, build some cool stuff, play around with the ledger. Uh, full disclosure: I'm running like a fake network network layer. If you if you want to uh, run this network layer and reproduce all of this exactly, you'll have to pull down uh, ETH build and run uh, this socket script locally and eth build will go talk to that socket script locally same thing with if you're doing compiling with uh contracts but we'll get to that later all right happy bow tie friday thank you